pensaba que era de, de animal. After 35 days and 790 kilometers, I was elated to reach the end of my Camino. I felt an overwhelming satisfaction for completing the goal I had envisioned four years ago. It was fantastic having my brother beside me as well as seeing more than 40 of the 170 pilgrims I had met along the way. I had learned lots about myself, my friends, and the world. So I asked my fellow pilgrims to share, what advice do you have for someone thinking about doing the Camino? There's an old saying which I love, which is that uh, walking is hard, not walking is harder. And I totally recommend that uh, if you can walk at all to just get out and do things like this. It doesn't have to be exactly the Camino de Francis, Camino de Santiago de Francis that we're doing, which is the sort of uh, most traditional route of the Camino and it's a bit under 800 kilometers and we're doing the whole thing and we're doing it so as to get the sort of context of the original walk and uh, very much looking forward to it. It's very fun. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Uh, it's, it's always fun. You see so many people. It's, it's, for everyone, there is a place. You can just go in here with just a couple of clothes and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be just fine. You'll be just fine. It's very fun. It's just, it's also like, uh, I think just good for like thoughts and just life decisions like just do it it's great so if there's any advice i would actually if there's any advice i have to give people uh maybe reserve a spot to sleep that might be a good idea there are the normal stages in the book and advertised but uh, i recommend staying at the smaller hostels one will stop after the big ones because you can uh you meet you'll get you get closer with the people that you stay with and uh you know you form that communal familiar much easier my advice would definitely be to train for the Camino, wearing your shoes and make sure you know what to expect when you arrive there. Okay. That would be my advice. Cool. Just, just do it. It's, it's really easy. There's uh, no planning needed because the marking is great. On, on the way you don't even need uh, your navigation because there's always signs, there's always markings. So you always find, find your way and there's always people on the road and always uh, a water fountain to get water, always supermarket to get food. So it's, it's really easy. Less is more in the pack, I would say is a, is a good one. Uh, I think the Camino is kind of an exercise in not getting injured. Less is more, slow and steady. <laughs> Merino wool socks and avoid blisters at all costs. <laughs> pack light. <laughs> uh, every, every uh, ounce that you don't have to carry is uh, yeah, it can help you survive longer. So if I could do it again, um, I would like to have more time up my sleeve and kind of manage the places where you're staying so that you don't feel like you're having to rush to get a bed because it's those moments where you can actually stop and someone invites you in somewhere. Um, and you, uh, you have a conversation with someone and that's, that's I think, part of the magic. So, there are towns everywhere, so don't pack like you're going into the wilderness. Because that's what I did. And in Australia, you just take everything with you. And I thought that I was packing light, but you can pack lighter. <laughs> Whatever you put into your pack, yeah, maybe really think about it or send it to Santiago, that's an option. I would suggest pack light. Yeah, I've seen too many big packs, too much stuff. I packed 7K, seven kilograms, including my water, which was uh, a kilogram and a half. So uh, I had like five and a half to 6K worth of gear. There's plenty of things you can buy on the Camino. I didn't bring a big med kit. My brother had a little bit one, but when I started to have foot issues with uh, a few blisters, I just bought the stuff as opposed to bringing a bunch of foot blister stuff. I thought I wouldn't have problems, but when I did, I just bought it here. Even though my pack is like, I've got three t-shirts, three pair of underwear, three pair of socks. So it's not like I, you know, I only have two pair of everything. And still there's about four or five things. I brought an inflatable pillow I've never used. I brought a selfie stick and a phone holder that I tried to use once and didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I'd leave that at home. I brought my microphone. Um, for better YouTube videos, but I ended up only using it a couple times. Your back will thank you for it. Uh, I've never had an issue, barely ever have felt my pack. 
usually when it's like a big orange and an extra drink or something is when I feel it. But apart from that, I know other people have kind of struggled with it. A lot of people send stuff home or send stuff to Santiago. So save yourself all of that and pack, but pack appropriately. I think my brother went a little too late and uh, was lacking the clothes necessary to make it through and had to buy some stuff. So yeah, it's kind of a conflicting uh, pack light, but pack appropriately so that you have enough uh, when you need it.